Welcome back to second chapter. Now we've pretty much finished our investigation here at Genesis. We found enough witnesses. We had our very nice conversation with Chloe. So it's time to reconvene with the others. Holy crap, it's late already. I think we've gotten just about everything we can we can from the students. Shall we head back to the student council room? Yeah, let's. With any luck, we can put together what we've heard with everyone else and figure out what's up. All right, let's do that. I really, really like that conversation that we had with Chloe. I uh, I was really torn about whether or not to tack it onto the end of the last one or do it now, at the beginning of this one. Hopefully enough people saw it. If you missed it, go back and watch it. It's one of the coolest scenes in the game. Hey, you're back. All right, everyone, reports. Hit me in the face. Well, most of our interviews with the staff were fruitless. Only the school janitor saw someone suspicious. The suspect seemed to disappear right outside the gate to the old schoolhouse, apparently. Yeah, the teaching staff were all too busy preparing for the tests, so nobody saw anything useful. The cafeteria lady and Fauna, the receptionist, also didn't have much to say. I was kind of afraid of that. Well, for our part, we heard some interesting stories from three students in particular. Estelle reported Patrick, Mickey, and Felicity's stories to the group. All of them centered around the rear of the school's grounds, near the old schoolhouse. That strikes me as too similar to be a mere coincidence. I got some results too. I took 30 pictures of the students and teachers, and 50 of the school scenery. They're all really cute. I love this place. Sadly, my efforts failed to shine. I did, however, cause several beautiful kittens to flock to the siren call of my loot. So you two accomplished literally nothing, like, at all. I mean, I wasn't expecting much, but come on. So that'd leave me for last, I suppose. I looked over the records for any similar cases. Problem is, everything here is so new, there's nothing really in the way of ghost stories and whatnot. Anything remotely relevant centers around the old schoolhouse. The old schoolhouse again. It's suspicious no matter how you look at the case. I'm a little unclear. What is the history of that building? It's the original Janus building. It's been around for centuries as far as I know. The new campus was finished about 20 years ago? The school moved here and the old place has been closed off ever since. Wait, hang on. It's closed off, but I thought we popped in there during the school festival. Unfortunately, some of the very dangerous monsters that have been wandering around got in after you left. We've had to leave it tightly locked and abandoned ever since. Oh my, a stone ruin dating back centuries. It strikes me as the perfect haunt for a ghost. Thanks a heap for pointing that out. Well, I really don't want to go, but it's not like we have any other leads. It's getting pretty late though, so how about we check it out tomorrow? Yeah. Why Estelle? Whatever makes now a bad time. It doesn't seem that late. Er, well, you see, it's almost nightfall, and it might be dangerous with the monsters and stuff. It'll be a bit of a challenge during the day, so I imagine it'd be stupidly dangerous at night. Ah, but is that not the point? The truly terrifying manifest best under the light of the moon. If there is any time to grasp the true nature of our specter, it is now. Yeah, yeah! You gotta get ghost pictures at night. It's the law, or something. The law in Looney Land, maybe. Huh? Estelle? What's wrong? Uh, I don't know. Thought I saw something outside the window. It was sort of a whitish shadow. Probably just Sieg. Uh, hold on. A white shadow? Estelle? What's... <laughs> Estelle? Estelle? Estelle, wake up! 
Huh? Estelle, you're awake. Oh, thank goodness. You, you had a sweating there, Estelle. So, how do you feel? I think I'm okay. Wait, this is the girl's dorm, right? Why am I... Wait, I saw it! I saw the white shadow right out that window! And then it... We know, honey. Calm down. <sighs> so you really did see a ghost. Estelle, what did the white shadow look like? Well... It was a man dressed in old-fashioned clothes, like an opera get-up or something, and wearing a mask. He danced in circles, and he was glowing. He flew off toward the old schoolhouse. Whoa! N what a neato ghost! I'm going to hazard a guess that this matches the description you've heard before, right? I figured the old schoolhouse would have something to do with this. Screw it. What? I don't know if this is a spook or a dude with an airship in his pants or whatever. If he's going to run around looking crazy and scaring people and making them faint, I'm going to beat him to a pulp once and for all. Beat him to a pulp? And what exactly happened to your fear of ghosts? I was scared of ghosts because I wasn't sure if they existed or could rip my soul out or something. Now that I've seen one, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Not at all. If I see it again, I'm going to polish my staff with its face. I'm not sure if this is courage or if she's gone off the deep end. Oh, Estelle. Alright, I got the key to the back gate from the teachers. Thanks, Hans. Let's get into the schoolhouse, punch this ghost in the face, and drag him back to the guild. <laughs> We're finally entering Estelle's element, it seems. Well then, let us begin our test of courage. Monsters may have taken root in the ruin, so only those skilled at the art of combat should enter. A good idea. Dorothy can come, but I'm afraid our student friends need to remain here. Yeah, I know. We'll leave everything to you big, tough fighting types. We'll be waiting here in case something happens. Uh, Sherizard, may I accompany you? Hmm? A uh, princess? I don't think it would be very wise for you to do something this dangerous. The children at the orphanage have seen this. Whatever it is, I can't simply let it be. I've also been inside the old schoolhouse on a few occasions. I think I may be able to help. Hmm, I see. Well, you certainly proved you're quite the fighter during the coup. Alright then, just be careful. I will, I promise. Okay then, let's head into the schoolhouse and catch us a ghost. Yeah! Ah, oh, we are ready to go. Well, not really. We'll be ready to go when I do this. Load this save file. What is this? This is, uh, this is movie magic. Because where I saved inside of the auditorium didn't... I only had access to Chloe and not the other party members. So I had to play a little ahead and create this save file so that I could uh, build Olivier's orbit as well as Chloe's and put all their good equipment on. Chloe's uh, orbit is also very good. It's also one big line. It focuses on uh, water quartz. The gate is locked. Use the key. Let's go. Also, I don't agree with, like, saying that Chloe can't handle this. Didn't I take her to the final boss? I'm pretty sure I did. I think I took, uh, Chloe and Olivier. So this is the old schoolhouse. Appropriately spooky, I think. Heh, <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. I can feel my blood beginning to sing with the terror of it all. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, you two sure seem terrified, alright. Oh. What's up? Estelle, on the door. This is... a card? Great. Let's see what's written on it. Oh, invited wanderers, welcome unto my transient abode. If you do not fear the curse of a thousand years, then hasten to join me. The first curse is in the great room. The hollow flame shall guide thee. 
<laughs> what? The card was engulfed in flame and burned away. By the goddess? Ooh, maybe it's spontaneous combustion. I've heard that happens with spooky poltergeists. <laughs> what a provocative little ghost we have. Attempting to riddle us, is he? Oh, it's on now. I'll teach him not to mess with real living people. As long as you keep that brave face on, we'll be okay. The riddle, though, the hollow flame shall guide thee. Hmm. I'd be willing to guess the great room is the room is the big entry hall just beyond. We'll need to investigate it. Right, come on. There might be something on the outside over here. It might have shoved a chest in somewhere. Or not. I could be thinking of first chapter as well. We got to explore around the outside of this place once before. Nope, can't see anything. Alright, let's go in. We did pop in here during the uh, school festival. So this is the main hall. The layout here is pretty simple. You got an upstairs and a downstairs. Let's hit up some of these rooms. I imagine, yeah. They have treasure chests. I know where I'm supposed to go. Let's see what's in these side rooms first. Nope, nothing here. Trails loves its, uh, its old buildings. Loves old school houses. Also, it kind of begs the question of who set the fires. Are there fires in here? Are there fires in first chapter? I don't remember. Let's see, I think the top floor has like a, yeah, leads out to this place. Which has nothing this time around. I think we found Joshua up here during uh, first chapter. Speaking of which, and that whole uh, weirdness at the school festival. Remember like Joshua was super distracted by um, some of the stuff that was going on during the festival? And he heard, I can't remember from who, if it was one of the students or maybe like one of the orphanage kids. But he heard about uh, someone spotting a guy with silver hair. Obviously, um, Lawrence, as we know him so far. And that's why Joshua went out looking for him, because of their connection. We still have a lot to learn about. The door is locked. The key doesn't fit. Uh, use anything? Don't use anything. Oh, I'm supposed to find something. What am I missing? Oh. Oh, I know. I am supposed... There we go. I was going to say, there's... This is a puzzle. You have to find stuff. Of course I do. Should have remembered who I was dealing with. A hollow flame? I guess you could think of a candlestick that way. This is the only one that isn't lit. Let me take a look. There was a card within the candlestick. The second curse is within the classroom. Seek the south-facing student. The card burst into flames. What? Well, at least the answer was right. So, a classroom this time. And a south-facing student in an empty school. If I remember correctly, there are four classrooms total in the left wing. Two on each floor. Well, let's check them, let's check them all and keep an eye on our compass. I don't really have a compass. <laughs> I, if I had to guess, I'm going to have to interact with one of the desks. Might be on the, the south side. Is it one of these? Sure is. All the other desks are messed up, but this one looks okay. And it is facing south precisely. I suspect this is what we're looking for. Let me take a look. There was a card in the desk cavity. The third curse lies within the garden. Seek ye the fallen neck. Ha <laughs> ha! The card bursts into flames. Yeah! Well, that was right at least. But where's the next one? The fallen neck in the garden. A metaphor clearly, but for what? What a marvelous mystery. 
I think I know. All right, let's get back upstairs out onto that terrace. Pretty sure that's gonna have what I need. This boy, here we go. A fallen neck in the garden. This matches the requirements in a way. Yeah, this looks like it. Look, the stone planter held a card in an old key. Now thine curse is realized. Overcome the final trial and stand before me. Ho <laughs> ho! Card bursts into flames. Russet key. That's the end of the riddles, I think. I hope. I hope thine curse is realized. It's just a metaphor, though. <laughs> Regardless, he wishes us to use the key. Let's find a lock it might open. Boy, I wonder which lock it could possibly be. I do remember this room, though, from the first chapter. Wasn't there, like, a big dragon statue in it? The door is locked. Use the rustic key. Yeah, there it is. Is this a statue of a dragon? This statue's been here for as long as I can remember. Apparently, it's carved in the image of a dragon who used to reside in La Pearl. Hmm. There's something off here. Let me take a look at this fine dragon. See if there's anything... Victory. For something like this to be beneath the statue. Huh, not a bad little plan. This is getting quite exhilarating. Yeah, someone's really trying to make this fun. If this was a touristy trap place, I bet it'd get a lot of guests. But, you know, something about all this seems weird. Like, beyond what you'd expect. Like, those cards. Doesn't that seem weird for a ghost? Yes, it would seem difficult for an incorporeal spirit to do all this. One way or another, we're matching wits with someone, something which clearly intends to challenge us. Stay sharp. We need to head down there. Alright, guess what? This is a big proper dungeon. I will use this. Thank you very much. I should, like, cook up some stuff that can build CP. Because I'm not getting it, because I'm not fighting monsters. But it looks like I'm going to have to now. Huh? The enemy is upon us. This thing's gross. Well, I'm right next to a uh, recharging station, so why don't we use a really cool art? Let's see, this is the strongest uh, water art. So I'm gonna stall a little bit here. We'll cast something with Ollie too, just in case it doesn't kill. Cause he's also got some cool stuff. He has a really good support art as well. Where is it? Where are you? Zodiac temporarily increases all allies parameters. So that's a tough one to get with uh, specific quartz builds, but Ollie can do it. Let's see what I want to use here. Uh, maybe Lost Mobius. Yeah, his casting time is like nothing. Oh no, Dorothy! Holy shit! That was almost a game over. Alright, stall one more turn. Hopefully this kills. If not, then we can just whack him a bunch. Okay, he has a uh, freaking guard on him. That's great. <laughs> Let's do it again. I can't believe the fucking turnaround on this is nothing. Ollie is so good with arts. What a good boy. Ah, oh, shit. I didn't do anything. There we go. Well, that takes care of that. One experience. Phew! 
Phew, that was a couple pieces of cake, I think. So this place is some kind of underground ruin? Yes, it seems so. The architecture is similar to buildings from the Middle Ages. I had no idea a place like this was so close to the academy. Hmm. The monsters in this place are as thick as hopper chiefs in a wine cellar. This ruin must be the trial mentioned in the card then. Yes. Bringing unarmed civilians in with us would be exceptionally foolish. Hey, Dorothy? Huh? What's up? You were listening, right? It'll be very dangerous ahead, and I'd hate to see you get hurt. Would you mind waiting for us in the room we just came through? Hmm, ah, uh, but, but, I wanted to get some awesome ghost pictures. Hey, don't worry, Dorothy. We'll come back if we find anything, okay? You can get your awesome pictures then, right? Well, if I gotta. Be careful, okay, guys? Well then, shall we? The monsters here are incredibly ferocious. Let's proceed carefully and fight only when necessary. Right. Of course. Naturally. Yeah, after I use this orbit charging station, though. Alright, so this is a proper dungeon. This is... This place is big. So I'm going to cheese it a little bit by going through like the correct direct path immediately. So like there there's a big fork to start this thing off and really all that was uh, out there or like on the other side. There are just rooms with chests, you know, monsters for you to fight obviously to grind you up when you're playing the game for the first time. And cool things to find in the room. Maybe some weapons. Good uh, consumables. What's this? I shouldn't have opened this. God damn it. I talked about this when I was in the tower. I was like, I shouldn't open red chests just because they're right in front of me. Let's go with basic attacks. I need to build up some uh, some CP. They're all going to freaking buff each other as they die, too. How annoying. They cannot damage me, however. The Sepith is nice, I suppose. That is the one downside of the way I'm playing right now, is that um, I could actually use the Sepith from a, a playthrough, but I don't really want to take the time to fight battles on camera. There's some crazy good quartz you can make at the end of the game, uh, and I have some of them already equipped to us, but I could always make more in like the final chapter. All right, let's just keep going with the strategy because I want to build up CP. Yeah, these guys are going to be hard to hit. So let's take care of the other ones first. There we go. Just needed one person to hit that thing. Alright, we're going to have another fork in the road here. You want to go right. Take another right. And this is how you completely trivialize a major dungeon. We are at the end. Boy, that took like 45 minutes off the playthrough. Seriously, going around and fighting all of that at normal speed would have taken forever. So we'll create a save file here. Not that I'm going to die, but it doesn't hurt. Hey! Hmm, you have a shadow and are tangible, so somehow I doubt you're a ghost. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to introduce yourself then. <laughs> Welcome, my guests! To my humble transient abode. I receive you with open arms. Your host will not disappoint, I assure you. <laughs> a mask? He's exactly as you and Polly described him, Estelle. So then, you are the ghost who has been disturbing Ruan? Indeed I am, Princess Claudia. It is the greatest pleasure to meet you in person at last. How do you know who Chloe is? 
<laughs> My pet, there is nothing, no item or secret on this plane or above which I cannot take. Ah, but I am uncouth and have not introduced myself to my guests. Allow me then. I am Enforcer Number 10, the mysterious gentlemanly phantom thief, Blue Blanc. Ah, that is to say, the Enforcer Number 10 of the Society of Ouroboros. Ouroboros? The Society? Such murderous withering glares, I assure you, they are not necessary today. I am merely here to perform a simple, trivial experiment. Not even the slightest hair on my body has any intention of conflict with you. An experiment? Wait, that's... That's the black orb mint Colonel Richard had. The gospel. Quite. Except, unless my eyes deceive me, that one is even larger than the last. Interesting. It is as he said, then. You already know of these. The gospel I hold is a new model, developed for the purpose of the experiment such as this. It has proven quite the aid in my test over the past few days. <laughs> Tess, what are you doing here exactly? What indeed? As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Allow me to show you in person. The ghost? No, it seems to be a projection of some sort, casting in the air using that device. I've never heard of such a device being invented. Naturally not. This is a hologram projector that we developed. Of course, the projector, on its own, can cast images little further than this, but with the power of a gospel, one can do things such as this. Well, the concept is clear enough, I think. The good citizens of Ruan received a once-in-a-lifetime performance. They should be thrilled. Unbelievable. This whole thing has been for the purpose of creating a few pranks. Tut, pranks! Such an insult to my performances. It was a gift of enjoyment and distraction to a city suffering the stresses of a heated election. Can you not see the beauty of such a gift? Okay, I can kind of get what you're doing, I think, but... Tell me, why did you do all this? What did you, why did you scare so many people? What do you people... What does Ouroboros have planned? Ah, uh, but it's not my place to speak the mind and purpose of the Grand Master. Forgive me. Why I myself am here assisting in the plan, however, is simple. I have come seeking an audience. With you, Princess Claudia. What? Your beautiful pride, which was on such magnificent display when you brought justice upon the old mayor. I agreed to participate in this plan, to claim that beauty for my own. Oh, I have waited this day on pins and needles for months. You cannot imagine my joy. What? I... Justice upon... You mean what happened with Mayor Dalmore? Wait, how the hell do you know about that? I was a fly on the wall for that little event. Or perhaps a shadow? Like this, for example. You were in the Dalmore Mansion? A Phantom Thief is, in essence, a worshipper of beauty. We chase it, we covet it. And that which is prideful cannot help but captivate us. Princess, your pride has stolen my heart. <laughs> Indeed, you have stolen the heart of a phantom thief. Ah, oh, what sweet humiliation this is. My pet, how do you intend to atone for such a slight upon me? Um, I don't really... Such perfect self-absorption. 
just like a certain someone I know. Hmm? Oh, I beg you, do not compare me to that. So you're an agent of Ouroboros. You aren't what I was expecting, but... If you're going to try and hurt Chloe, I'm definitely going to stop you. Estelle? Well, in accordance with the laws of the Bracer Guild, you are hereby under arrest and charged with intrusion and theft, among other charges. We have a number of questions for you, including ones about the gospel. Please surrender quietly. How boorish. Arrest? Me? While it would be invigorating to have a little fracas, I did choose this place for a reason. I shall allow him to be your opponent, I believe. What do you... What the... Hmm. I would say I have a bad feeling, but somehow, I feel it's too obvious. What the heck is that thing? Some kind of armored centaur machine? Quite. It seems he was once the guardian of this place. The war chap was half broken when I arrived. I repaired him out of the kindness of my heart, you see. Since he's here, I think he could serve as a worthy opponent, don't you? You have to be kidding. It's coming. On your guard. Yo, here we go. Like, immediately, bosses in the series get, like, kicked up by a lot. A whole lot. So, unfortunately, these little dudes are going to, uh... They're going to buff when they die. Let's just whip out some great arts. Why don't we? The Saint is strength and defense, plus 25. Let's go with that. As soon as I can find it. Oh, it's singular. That's right. Ollie has the good one. Then we'll go with uh, the strongest art I got. I did a lot more than I thought it might. I mean, I know I'm huge, but things, bosses in this game tend to have like crazy good defense. All right, let's have Ollie cast Zodiac. Eh, won't really do much for her strength because I'm not using basic attacks, but it'll help her defense. All right, let's see what these guys got. They're gonna move around a little bit. Oh, called allies. This guy can bring his ads back. Alright, Grand Stream. Well, there they go. Let's see if you have anything on you that can stop this. Nope. She's bad news for you. Acrest Rocks, that's an awesome one. Let's see here. I don't know if the Debilitate's gonna take. Use a little bit of MGS5 here. Oh, boo. You're gonna waste your turn calling in an ad? Yeah. 
Oh, shit. That was a waste. Mm, what do we want to do here? I'm going to take out the ad. Yo, Chloe. Silver Thorn with the crit. Let's see how much it does. All right, rely on Ollie to finish this up. I want to use something different. That's a cool one. Still, it's gonna actually attack for zero damage. Oh, guess who's getting poked with my saber? I think he doesn't disappear, he just kind of falls over. Yeah, I got one experience for every enemy I killed. Unless the small ads don't count and he's just seven. Maybe that's the case. Phew. We won, I think. Yes, that was a bit of a struggle. Now then. You are, I hope, prepared for the consequences of what you've done. Really now. Such a lack of elegance in your fighting styles. I'd hoped for better. Well, if I must... Let me show you a proper example of elegance. Flame! What? The torches! Aguilee! Ah! This is shadow sewing. Impossible! Apologies, my guess, but I must ask that you remain still from this point forward. You seem surprised when Talmor's treasure did this, however. For we enforcers, such abilities are trivial, even without such crutches. No! We were too careless. Scree! Sieg! Ah, oh, there you are, courageous little white knight. Your chivalrous bravery is admirable, but I must ask you to remain still for a while. Ah, oh, my Princess Claudia, you are now a prisoner to my desires. <laughs> How does it feel, I wonder? Do not think that this will break me. Even if you bind my body, you shall never enslave my heart. So long as I am myself, you will never take me. Yes, yes! Those eyes! Those eyes that shine with such beautiful pride, which say, I will never break. That shine is what I desire. Oh, you are everything I hoped for. Hey, cut the crap, okay? Creepy mask, dude. Get the hell away from Chloe. Creepy mask, dude. Really. To not understand the beauty of the mask. You have a very dim understanding of refinement, pet. I ask you, be silent. <laughs> Hmm. Ah, uh, my apologies. You've simply made a cr very crude mistake. I'm afraid I couldn't help but give an innocent chuckle. Oh? This should be amusing. In the way watching a pig wallow in mud is captivating. And what exactly is my mistake, bard? I certainly wouldn't deny Claudia's beauty. Not even for a moment. Her beauty, however, extends far beyond the estimation your frail, tasteless aesthetic provides. You may approach her again when you have learned the first thing about beauty, Chester of the Grand Master. What? Your words are bold in the face of death, Araponian. But what gives vagabond musician scum such as yourself any right to insult my sense of beauty? Choose your next words carefully. Or they will determine your fate. Hmm. 
then I shall phrase them as a question. What is beauty? You disappoint. I expected more than such foolishness. Beauty is pride, a distant light gleaming far above mortal cares. Indeed, can any other answer even be allowed? I think not. Really, I can't even laugh at such an answer. True beauty, Blue Blanc of Ouroboros, is love. What? Beauty only exists because people are brave enough to love. And without love, without the bonds of affection and camaraderie that binds us together, beauty is not but a hollow illusion. The pride and the humble both shine as a diamond in love. How childish! Love is the hollow illusion, Claudius Jongler! Beauty is an absolute! Its existence does not depend on transient human emotions. Yes, just as the flower that blooms on the highest mountain, unseen by man, remains beautiful in anonymity. Hmm. Uh... Claudius Jongler indeed. Well, so much for the raw terror and suspense at any rate. I, um, uh, I'm not quite sure what to say to all this. Never would I have expected to find a proper rival in the ways of beauty among such ruin. Musician, give me your name. Olivier Lindheim. A wandering bard and hunter of love, roaming to and fro in search of its perfect manifestation. Olivier Lindheim, hmm? I shall remember that name. Uh, hey, I finally found you guys. Sorry, I know you said to wait, but you guys were so late. I couldn't wait anymore. D dorothy Oh, no, Dorothy, run away, please. Huh? Hey, a bass man in white clothes. You're the ghost, aren't you? You are. What? Uh, well... Okay, say cheese. What? Scree! Ah! Oh, I can move again! Of course! The flashbulb wiped our shadows clean! Ah, oh, what an astounding girl! Photography and perfectly timed heroism, all in one package. Leave it to me! Even though I don't know what I uh, did. <laughs> Crap! The gospel! Ah, oh, it has been an age since I have been entertained, so... You have my thanks, my guess. You, what else do you intend to do? I am going to end our revelry for tonight. Forgive me if I seem an ungracious host. It appears, however, that I must take stock of my assumptions about you. I can see now why the Black Fang takes such an interest in you. The Black Fang? You... you mean Joshua? We are old acquaintances, in a sense. The reason you came to my attention at all was because I noticed that shock of black hair and those amber eyes with you. Though his memories have returned to the stage of, stage of his mind, I do wonder where he's rehearsing. Ah! Uh, what? I must now take my leave, my guest. The true plan has but started. I would gird yourselves for long labors and suffering ahead, if you intend to oppose us further. And I do intend to keep our little game on going on the side. Till we next meet! <laughs> He's gone. I, I still can't believe it. Wow, it's like a magic trick. <laughs> Most impressive. I suppose it behooves me to take him as my rival. Okay, we are so beyond worrying about rivals here. He may look like some pervo ballroom freak, but that power of his is not normal. Indeed. Ouroboros. Lawrence is in an exception, then. All the enforcers must be pa that powerful. And so... The ghost incidents that had so stirred Ruan came to an end. The next morning, Estelle and the gang parted with Dorothy and returned to the guild.
I see. Good work, all of you. The Society of Ouroboros. To be honest, I only half believed Cassius when he told me about a secret society up to no good. But, well, here's the reward for completing the investigation. Sure didn't expect it to turn out like this, though. I'll have the results forwarded to Cash or er, Brigadier General Bright and the rest of the army immediately. I get the impression they're desperate for information too. Yes, please do. If Ouroboros can produce something like that, holographic projector was it? They're far more capable than we even thought possible. Never mind producing another gospel, as casually as most people obtain a pair of shoes. The real objective seems to have been performing experiments with that new gospel. The fuss about the ghost was little more than the whim of a man in charge, really. Blue Block the Phantom Thief. He called himself Enforcer Number 10. If I had to get hazard a guess, Enforcer is probably a title for ranking agents in the society. I'd put money on the man we know as Lieutenant Lawrence being another one. Um, Estelle? Yeah, I know. The Black Fang. That's what Joshua called himself the night he disappeared. Joshua was also an enforcer, I bet. I always suspected there was more to him from the moment we first met. But given his age, I never thought he'd be able to match someone like the Phantom Thief. Somehow, I doubt he ever showed us what he was really capable of. Yeah, maybe. Hey, Jean? Uh, what is it? That Phantom Thief guy said the Society's plans had only just begun. I think they've got plots and stuff in motion all over La Burl. Have you heard anything from the other branches? Anything weird? Hmm. Nothing that stands out. I bet you're right, though. They're starting to act in the shadows all over La Burl. Given that our little ghost fuss is over, it might be wise for you to head somewhere else. Yes, I was just thinking that myself. Are any of the other branches looking a little strained, potential society trouble aside? I guess the Zeiss branch, sort of. Their standby, Gundolf, had to head to Grand Cell. It sounds like they're fairly undermanned at the moment. Okay then, we should head out there and help them. Will Ruan be alright though? The Bows branch is dispatching Sting to help us out in a few days. Melvin and I will be able to hold the fort until Sting gets here, I think. Oh, and once you get to Zeiss, you may want to check in with Professor Russell. He might have an insight on the new gospel you guys observed. Yeah, that's a good idea. I totally want to see Tita again anyway, so I'll head over to his place right away. Well then, we should head for the airship port as soon as our preparations are complete. Jean, if you would be so kind as to prepare four tickets for the Zeiss bound flight. Pardon? Where do you get off taking the lead and... Hold on, four? Well, naturally, you and Shara, and then myself and Miss Chloe here, of course. Wh what? I thought this might come up. You're certain you wish to come with us? The search for Joshua is my mission as a hunter of love. Not to mention the matter of my new rival. That should be reason enough, I would think. Okay, wait. Leaving your total friggin' insanity aside for a second. Don't drag Chloe into this too, you jerk. She doesn't even want... No. Actually, I was... going to ask for the same thing. Say what? This malicious, mysterious society is operating within the borders of a burrow, plotting who knows what. As... what I am, I cannot simply ignore what they're doing. I must act. Besides, I want to help Joshua and you, Estelle. Uh, Chloe... But your classes! This morning I sent a letter to Dean Collins, stating I will be needing a break from lessons. My exam scores are excellent anyway, and I have all the credits I need to move on at the end of the year already. I talked to Jill and Hans about it, and they insisted I should go. What the? My, but you certainly go all in once your mind is made up. I I'm sorry. I suppose I am shoving myself onto you in a way. I can remain behind if you'd prefer. Oh, no, you don't. If you really want to come, I'd love to have your help. You don't have a problem with it, right, Shara? Just the opposite. I think it's a wonderful idea. Chloe's skills and orbital arts will be a great help 
as we'll see. Th thank you. Sherazard, Estelle, thank you. I will give it my all, I swear. Well, we're old friends, after all. We're the Red and Blue Knights, remember? Now let's combine our forces and find our lost princess. <laughs> That's right. Yes, lead on, Red Knight. Ah, then this would make me the lone wandering prince from a nearby country, here to take back the dark-haired princess, even if by force. You don't get to add roles. <laughs> well, good to see that sorted out. In that case, though, we should classify you two as temporary assistants. That way the guild can pay expenses for you. Yes, please do. Well, I shall assist you with all my heart. Let us be off. Ah, the end of the first chapter. Save, please. Gotta go into page three. And so the fit comes to an end. But the passion it left in my heart still burns within me. Ah, oh, my only solace is to wait in the pale moonlight for the cool breeze of the sea to steal my heated blood. Sorry to make you wait. Ah, oh, perfect timing. You really are perfectly punctual, my friend. It would not hurt you to learn to be fashionably late, you know. Sorry. But punctual is what I am. Now, what is your report? Oh, let us not be boorish and hurry, so, yes? This has been a grand evening. Allow me to savor it a little longer. Really, I'll take that as a report of, I really like them, then. Like? Ha! <laughs> the lovely princess has stolen even more of my heart. It's a miracle I yet live, I tell you. What's more? I met a rival in the arena of beauty and aesthetics. A rival! Me! <laughs> I shall be quite busy these next few weeks, I think. You really are hopeless. You're welcome to pursue your hobbies, but do not let it interfere with the plan. You need not worry on that score, my friend. On that note, here, take it. Very good. So, how did your experiments go? Yes, call it a 90% success rate or so. The hologram projector can accurately project for many hundreds of selge. The first two or so projections were miserable failures, I'm afraid. After the third, however, the device worked flawlessly. So, some cause for concern, but not much. It does function. I'll report to the professor at once. That gospel... Truly, it is far beyond contemporary technology, and I don't simply mean its ability to negate orbits. I know it was made by the 13 factories, but how exactly does it work? I'm not sure. I'm not privy to the details. According to the professor, these phenomena are just the tip of a miracle. Oh? So it's the stuff of miracles, is it? Hmm. Miracles are the providence of she who dwells above alone. What does he mean, I wonder? Regardless, a few more experiments should make the potential of the gospel clear. With that... Hmm? Oh, we've had a number of unexpected actors coming onto the stage this night. How shall this cameo end, I wonder? <laughs> That's up to how our hidden mouse responds. Ha, indeed. Ha ha. Come now, mouse. Cry for us. Well, hey. Hmm? I'm not sure who that little mouse is, but your life is spared, it seems. Thank Adios for your life, rodent. Uh, bring on the beer. Uh, can't drink no more. Damn it. 
I could have. I could have. <sighs> okay. Thank you, Adios Saints, and anyone else I'm forgetting for saving your humble servant. <sighs> like I need to be told to give praise to the goddess. What monsters, though? So those are the enforcers of Ouroboros, huh? Chapter 2, The Raging Land. Okay, we're off to Zeiss. Anyone have anything else they want to do before we go? No, not I. If you can't think of anything, we should be going. I can think of one piece of business. Where did Miss Dorothy go? She disappeared quite suddenly, and I'm curious as to where she could have gone. I think she went to see Niall in the hotel. That's a good point. I think we should go say hi and thanks before we leave her on. Yes, I think so too. We owe Dorothy our lives, really. I wanted to say goodbye to Matron Theresa and the children before we left as well, but... I tried calling them from the guild a minute ago, and I think they're out. They are? Aw. I wanted to say goodbye too. Well, we can always write them a letter from Zeiss, you know. I bet they'd love it, in fact. And we can always come back here easily enough if we really need to. Yes, that's true. I'll write them then. Hey, hey, we'll write them. I want in too. <laughs> Well, come, my friends, let us away. To the pulsing heart of the Orbal Revolution and the seat of geniuses. Zeiss. Okay, let's save the game. When we pick up next time, we actually have uh, some post-chapter stuff to deal with here in Ruan. There actually isn't nothing to do here. There are a couple of things. In fact, there's one really, really bad side quest that I need to knock out. That's going to be a pain. Okay, but before I end... Obviously, a lot happened with the whole blue bonk fight scene, all that stuff down there at the uh, bottom of the old schoolhouse. Blue bonk, Phantom Thief, uh, we have run into him before. Well, not only was he disguised as that dude at the mayor's mansion in first chapter, but he also was the source of one of our side quests in first chapter. You remember when Mayor Dalmore's, what was it, like a statue or a chandelier or something got stolen from his house? And we had to run all over Ruan doing stupid quests and reading his dumbass cards. Hate Blue Blanc. It's the worst. If Ollie's my favorite character, then Blue Blanc is my least favorite character. Gets on my nerves so much. What a dick. Oh, there's a lot of fun stuff going on. And what about Kevin sneaking a little peek on the conversation between Lawrence and uh, Blue Blanc? interesting stuff there. He got a little bit lucky that he avoided a fight. So now we kind of have a better idea of what Ouroboros is currently up to at this stage in the game. And they're testing out these newly manufactured Gospels, which is in itself kind of mind-blowing. So, like, Ouroboros as an antagonist entity, they are really, really advanced. Like, ridiculously so in the Trail series in terms of, like, technology and funding and the strength of their enforcers and everything they are like so overpowered it's crazy so remember when we found the original gospel or when we were carrying it around for a couple of chapters in the last game before losing it um that thing was like inexplicable remember those tests we did in zeiss with professor russell where uh he cre like accidentally shut down the power to the entire fucking city by trying to drill into it and they're like the thing was like perfectly made it's like mind-blowing it's like where the hell did this thing come from it must be something left over from the ancient Zemurian civilization but now we just got information that somehow Ouroboros is making new ones of these things how how can Ouroboros possibly manufacture something that like would baffle Zeiss Central Factory as well as other leading companies in the surrounding nations on the continent how well, we got the name drop. I think that's the first time we've gotten the name drop in the entire series. Hopefully I'm not wrong on that. But the 13 factories of Ouroboros. Uh, even as a trail stand today, not to spoil anything in future games, but even now, uh, 
don't know too much about the 13 factories. It's kind of a bit of a topic around Ouroboros that comes out slowly over time. But basically, expect Ouroboros to have uh, technology, weapons, anything you can think of far beyond what you would expect. Basically, Ouroboros may as well have like the might and technological prowess of a nation of its own. It's kind of ridiculous. And it's going to be kind of fun to see what uh, what other experiments they possibly have laying in the wait with the Gospels and Liberal. See you guys in the next one.